super excited. About to open up this box right here. Of 82 graded cards. A bunch of uh, tchotchke stuff. <laughs> Bunch of different varieties, different years, mostly tops. flannel and it's winter time out here. That looks yummy. <laughs> See, I already know the grades to everything because I've already cheated and looked. But here's the thing. It's, I forget. <laughs> like, seriously, I literally forget what until I see the item itself then I remember I'm like, oh yeah, that. <laughs> I looked it up like two days ago and now it has arrived <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up each box individually start off with some bangers <laughs> this is some crazy stuff right here <laughs> I'm, I'm being uh, silly because this stuff is garbage but this is the good thing so even somebody's trash is somebody else's treasure stuff like this See, see, yeah, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. You get the idea. <laughs> it's a 98, 1988, I'm sorry, 1988 tops. Doug Deschins. <laughs> Yo, know, crazy. But if you're trying to complete a set like PSA registry, I didn't check, but it'd be interesting to see what the population is on a complete set of 88 tops as common as it may be and as cr crappy as it may be like as long as you hit tens there is some value in in the crappiest of crap if you got a 10 of something there is value to it so that's important to remember even on crap like this but then see stuff like this to me because i'm a red sox fan so i love seeing stuff like this it's a cool rich gedman red sox and no one will ever forget this guy fernando valenzuela <laughs> hell yeah what that quirky pitch how his uh rotation would be how he would not even look sometimes and this guy was his underrated, but he was a lethal, lethal, lethal bat in the lineup. Eric Davis. This is great. I'm glad they kept them. They lotted them together. Still, sometimes the cards will be all set. like this. Is literally me opening it fresh. Like this is straight from the post office yesterday morning, and I'm finally getting home. <laughs> this is like three o'clock in the morning, mind you, right now. I'm finally getting home to open it. So I'm super, super excited. And this is cool. This is a cool card. Eric Davis was a, a really good player. Some would say he was pretty great. Let's like, real quick, even look at it. 
in 87, th 37 home runs, 100 RBIs, and 50 stolen bases. <sighs> Slugged 593. And look at that. And that was, in th was done in 129 games. So there's 162 games in a season. So he only got to play 129 of them, right? And he only had 474 at-bats. So he put up 37 home runs. Well, let's look at this. His average was 293. 139 hits, though, and 474 at-bats. 120 runs. Holy crap. Eric Davis was a beast in 87. He had a beast season. Seriously, Eric Davis. No joke. Great ball player. Here's even a <laughs> this one's even better. You can't even make an argument, but Paul Molitor had a better career than Eric Davis because he's in the hall, and I believe he hit 3,000 hits. <laughs> he had some monster seasons. Well, he hit 200 hits in this season, 82. But yeah, Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. Okay, see, so that's crap, right? This is a little bit above crap, okay? <laughs> it's Topps Tiffany, 91. Still, again, there's plenty of it out there, but, again, it's the tens. Because people are going to complete sets of these. PSA registry and whatever Beckett has for its version of it are legit. People are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to complete sets. That is not a joke. Let me repeat myself. People are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to complete PSA registry sets. So when you get cards that are what you feel have some nostalgia to them and you get Hall of Fame players on them, there's value when you hit the 10. Even some of the obscure players can be uh, valuable. Like, what's, is that Johnny Morton, I think? The, PS, the PSA 10 version of a 1986 Flair basketball card. Yeah, Michael Jordan's in it, Akeem Olajuwon, you name them, Carl Malone, Isaiah Thomas. They all have rookies in that set. And one of the best cards in that set is an obscure player, Johnny Morton's card in a PSA 10. Kinsenko. Look at that. They lined this up nice, like all 10s in a row. This is awesome because I didn't hit all 10s, people. <laughs> like so far, this is very nice. Like I'm very happy, but what's going to happen is there's going to be cards that are not going to be 10s. They grouped them all together, which was very nice of them. I don't even think I sent them out like this. Oh, yeah. I think I did, actually. Yeah. I think they actually just made an, an effort at putting them back in the way I sent them, which was cool. My whole approach is when I have, when I send the cards out, I'm hoping and praying that they see what I see when I send them. The art, the nostalgia, because that's how I, I view these. That they're, they're pictures like of, of actual today's versions of gladiators. Like that's what sports are. The competition is like, to me like a gladiator sport. That's how I view it. Whether the, whether what sport you're playing, they're all kind of like competition, um, and I'm hoping that they and the, I believe that these players that were really elite at the sport did treat it like a gladiator. Like they viewed it that way too, and that's why they were successful. So that's the type of uh, energy you need to bring. Kirk Gibson, Tan Tiffany. Big time uh, home run in the World Series to win it. Daryl Strawberry, 84, 85, sorry. 85. That's a cool, that's a good looking card right there. And then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through some cards quick because I talked too much. I'm sorry for that. And now we're just getting into uh, like the living set stuff, which has included tents in my going speed all oh, this see here's an example of what I'm talking about what's coming up next this is a prime example of what I'm talking about like I said oh they didn't put these together so I have the whole set of this this is like some tops.com like uh, first Thursday um, 
that's it. Yeah. Throwback Thursday. Like they every every so often during the season they, they come out with these sets online, tops.com, where you can acquire these. I got the whole set of it, but like the Mike Trout got like an eight. I know that. I remember that. <laughs> Eventually we'll come across it. I can't complain though. Like I really feel pretty good about this order. It, it really, uh, it really like even these coming back like nines. Mind you, a nine sucks, <laughs> but it's still a mint. Like that's the point that you have to pay attention to. It's still a mint. Like mint ain't bad, but the nine just takes something away from that. This is I like. This I don't. <laughs> But at any rate, it don't matter. It's all what someone's willing to pay for it. That's the value of it. But I did hit. And here we go. See, this is where it can kind of get boring for people that really are not, like, deep into this shit. So we're getting into some older stuff, right? Nothing crazy. Near mint, mint, which is fair, like that. It's very difficult when you get into this stuff. Like they're very, very picky. Like to get like nines and tens, like to get a nine on these, this is where that, that nine becomes a little bit more valuable in the older cards. Having an eight really don't do me nothing. It really doesn't. I have to all lot these together. And if anyone's interested, that's the way I sell these. I sell them in a nice, friendly priced lot that is affordable. And I, I mainly try putting together lots that make sense. Like whether they're, they're teammates or whether there's some um, history or something. Like I don't just randomly throw them together unless it's all I have, okay? <laughs> but usually yeah, there's some thought put into these, okay? So that's box one, which I'm very... This was very good to me. Whoa, it's an earthquake. <laughs> See, as long as I get these back. This is the stuff I collect. You won't see many Red Sox lots on, on Tchotchke collectibles on eBay. But what you will see is an occasional lot, because what I like to do whenever I get, like, this is a high grade. I, I already sent this card out before, or I might actually purchase it off of eBay, the same card in a seven. So now I just upped it a little bit. So my seven would be for, is going to be for sale. So that's how I do it. Every time I upgrade, I try getting rid of the old stuff. That's what this is cool. The only problem is after he gets out of this uniform and goes to another team potentially, because right now he's still not signed, there's speculation now the Yankees might even be interested, which would be crazy. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with John Carlos Stanton, but I don't know if they can, you can afford both those contracts, even the Yankees. That's asking a lot. But this guy in this uniform right now, it's pretty cool. But his stock is like flatline it's good it's just not doesn't go like this <laughs> it's just staying like this so something like this is probably like a $20 $25 card you know that, in my opinion but it goes with that set right here I was just hoping to hit all 10s but they, they weren't they didn't bless me the, the PSA gods didn't bless me what they did with this this is a cool card. This guy out here actually proves that anybody can do it. I believe he's like 5'7". Like, he's a little man. And this guy is uh, going to be a Hall of Famer. George Springer's from Connecticut. He's right next to Massachusetts. And now uh, he's, well, I guess, a local legend. So it was right next to where I'm at. 
was an earthquake. See what Strasburg. He's had a pretty decent career. Had some injuries, but he's uh, put it on pretty good. I think what I liked about this was it was his jersey number. I don't know if that's coming out. Yeah, 37. So that's his uh, jersey number. Makes it a little bit more valuable. Well, if you want to keep on watching to see the rest of these boxes, I'm going to make another video a little bit later, okay? Come back.